All right, welcome back uh, to the link. We're going to head straight into the Zoom room where we have uh, Mary Rhodes, the president of the Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association. Good morning, Mary. Good morning. Uh, Mary, if we could just start with, um, I don't know if you heard about this whole like Afghan refugee thing, uh, but have you had any uh, conversation, information, or anything to come your way? Uh, because we know you're in the loop. Yeah, I've heard from a couple of people, but I think the most important thing is to find out whether or not this is, um, you know, going to actually happen and who's really going to be in charge of that program should they get transferred to Guam as that for that transition. So I'm assuming it'll probably be led by the federal government, but of course, with the cooperation of the government of Guam. And so uh, regardless, we'll still need to wait until we hear officially from Joint Region Marianas and the government of Guam. Let me ask you that because we had Carlotta uh, Leon Guerrero, the governor's chief advisor for regional and military affairs on this morning. She said the governor had not been contacted yet, but they have put out their uh, feelers. I, I kind of want to say the last like similar-ish situation we had to this would have been the housing of the TR sailors because that was kind of like a federal local uh partnership i mean if you will uh, do you see similarities there and, and uh, do you think that uh if the governor hasn't been contacted yet that maybe we're not even part of the equation officially yeah i i think so i don't think that anything um even in conversation i think that the governor's office would certainly um still at least have you know uh visible visibility on it and know that um things are um, at least being discussed, not just only at Congress, but with uh, Secretary of State and all of the individuals involved, especially when it's going to come to uh, the funds related to housing, lodging, you know, feeding refugee camps. I think um, it's going to be really important to determine whether it's going to remain on base somewhere in a location or if they're going to lodge in the hotels. But it's a lot that we have to manage because um, depending on the timing, uh, we do uh, usually have a couple of things, you know, prepared with regards to military with in, in June, July, even August. And then also with the timing of our Airbnb program for the expats, when we're going to be promoting that um, once the governor um, blesses, you know, she's already put set aside a million dollars with UVB and 1500 vaccines. And so, uh, you know, we only have a limited amount of space at the hotels and we currently have uh, military staying there. So it's going to have to be, there's going to have to be a lot of co coordination and cooperation with each other. And it's also a lot of people, um, 70,000. I don't even, yeah, <laughs> that's almost half the population. Yeah, and it depends for how long as well, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just an initial um, transfer. It, it's also a time frame. How long is it going to be and how long will it take? Mm -hmm. So de from your perspective, there is definitely, you. we would definitely know. It wouldn't be like the military wouldn't tell, you know, the people of Guam or the, you know, the governor that, you know, we're having all these uh, Afghan mm -hmm. refugees come. It, it, yeah, I think so. Every time, um, you know, we do have also Vera Tukwasnia with the governor's office. And so she is that liaison. And we do meet with um, the group with Joint Region Marianas and Navy B Guam, especially uh, with regards to these kinds of activities in the region. And so we are, we at least get awareness of what's happening and, and how to prepare for that, especially when it comes to the lodging um, requirements so we do get involved at that level but i know that this is all preliminary and i certainly would want to wait for federal guidance on that especially with regards to funding and allocation of resources as in people yeah you mentioned air v and v what, what's the latest yeah thing? that's governor uh you know um gbb's term mm -hmm. with i know that you've had um uncle carl on as well as uh jerry and other people talking about it it's certainly a um a, a great program that we've been wanting for some time now i know that ghra and the guam chamber of commerce we met with gbb 
to talk about a lot of the interests that we've get, been getting, not just from expats, but uh, the different chambers of commerce around the region and also dependents of a lot of um, U.S. citizens. So it's really important that, you know, as people look for um, equity with vaccines, not just in developing countries, there are a lot of countries that are developing or developed nations that it's a slow rollout, right, of those vaccines, including Japan. And so it's really important that we provide a greater service um, to our nation, especially if Guam is the tip of the spear, we can certainly uh, be that resource for a lot of people around our region and also look, you know, use that, use this opportunity to really showcase what Guam has done as an island, as a community in really getting everybody vaccinated and working towards herd immunity and having um, the ability to get the vaccines. I think getting an increase in vaccines will be important, especially if we're, if we're gonna service that group. Um, right now only 1500 has been set aside, but it would be great to even request for more. Um, there are over 500,000 expats just in the Asia Pacific region. That's not counting dependents, US dependents. Well, that's cool to get that number. I haven't heard that one before. So this, I mean, you know, and, and just with the fanfare that we had for that one guy who came to get vaccinated with the Air V, I mean, I, right. I, I remember asking Uncle Carl, well, how much spend are we talking about here? And he was like, well, boy, they're going to be stuck here for 14 days. So, Well, they would certainly pay, pay for their program. Um, the cost of the, the million dollars that the governor has um agreed to, or at least actually it's the GBB board has approved the million dollars. That's really more for marketing mm -hmm. um, and outreach, uh, really public relations and marketing um, to promote this program to all of the key source markets and to the AmCham's in the region. So the expats and in, even in the future, any foreign national, they would pay for their vaccine program. The vaccine itself will be free but of course, any of the concierge services, the lodging, the food, all related to their stay, whether it's a three to four day stay or they're gonna stay the full 28 days, um, those packages are being developed right now. And we're also developing additional health and safety protocols because um, as you know, quarantine is waning. And um, so they are bringing that down as the request is being lowered uh, with the new protocols, quarantine protocols. So we're expecting that either a couple of facilities would be identified or public health would approve certain hotels to serve um, as designated hotels for this expat program. But wouldn't their lodging be paid for uh, anyway if you came in unvaccinated and huh. at least <laughs> right, at least six days. Yeah, because if you come in unvaccinated, they stick yeah, you in the least, quarantine. Yeah, at least six days would be, you know, paid for with the food. Uh, so you're Yeah, that's what we're currently yeah. um, putting together with GBB. And so I know that um, they're going to be presenting the options uh, to the governor as well as to public health. And so, um, you know, the program really ideally was for residents, but I know that we've been covering everybody's quarantine. But I think with the governor's new quarantine protocols, that will change eventually. So we have to be able to put together packages um, for this expat program yeah. or in the future for nationals who would come to Guam, should that be approved. I mean, what's the, is there like, is this time sensitive, Mary, to get this up and running? Um, because, you know, if you look around the world, like vaccinations picking up, right? Right. Right, there's only a short amount of window, right? Like you said, where people will, um, that demand is, pent up demand is there. And, um, but you know, I think they're having to balance uh, still continuing to get over that mark, uh, that number that they wanna get to. I know that we have over 70,000 immunized, but they also lowered the number to 12 to 15. And so that population has only gotten bigger as far as total to be vaccinated. Regardless, though, I think that what, again, they're balancing the interests of the local community and making sure we hit her immunity within the time frame that has been, uh, that we put out. 
but also at the same time looking at the opportunities around us like you said um but i don't think that most of the expats would expect that all of their costs would be covered i know that um they've already given information that they would definitely pay for that mm -hmm. especially as we're uh lowering our quarantine requirements but also as far as number of days but also with regards to um, if they're going to continue to have quarantine facilities in the near future. Is that what you're hearing? <laughs> Say that again, Bree? No, is, is that what you're hearing, that we might not have uh, these government quarantine facilities? In the yeah, it may future? not. You know, the again, the demand isn't there as much with one facility. But remember, in our pandemic plans, um, every hotel should be um, really able to stand up quarantine with a couple of floors and that's what we did at the beginning of um, this pandemic uh, last year March April when we still had flights there were certain hotels who served as quarantine facilities as long as they had reservations we needed to ensure um, GBB and GHRA coordinated with those hotels who actually had um, quarantine floors mm -hmm. uh what are you hearing though about doing away with the quarantine facilities because i think the are, are the contracts in place until september or is there do you know offhand if there's flexibility with our ability to pull off out of those i know um th i know that the contract is still in place but i don't know when they ex when it expires actually because mm. it had to be extended yeah. um and so but regardless again we still have to go through the protocols because we really have to prepare um, on a going forward basis, if we are to open this up and, and vaccinate expats and or foreign nationals at some point, we need to prepare all of the hotels to operate their pandemic plans should they need to identify quarantine floors. Mm -hmm. So the QVAC and the ISOVAC, um, they're in place today, but at some point it'll continue. The demand will, will decrease over time. Mm -hmm. Uh, you guys having a vaccination clinic? What is it tomorrow? Yes, we have our last scheduled vaccination clinic. Um, and that's tomorrow, May 25th at the Hyatt Regency Guam from four to seven. We have a few slots open if people are interested and it would be really great to have a full house. Um, we've been doing really great the last two months. And what's really um, incredible is that some business groups have been able to get their own individual vaccine clinics. So I know Dr. Wen made a, a presentation to the Guam Chamber of Commerce um, and has put that request out to other employer groups who wanna have on-site vaccine clinics. And so there have been several companies that have um, taken them up on that offer. And so we've now targeted towards individual companies and now even the schools. So we just had the FD vaccine clinic um, last week Friday. So it's it's really good that we're getting to directly to homes and to schools and to places of work. What about with the GHRA uh, staff? Do you have any like numbers, percentages? Have you guys hit that, that wall that you hit where it's just the vaccine hesitancy is all that's left? Um, actually, we've seen the increase, right? So we've moved that dial from about 30, 35% when we first started, upwards of high 60% to some hotels are at 85%. And so we're continuing to see that um, increase there. But as you're stating, it, it will start to peter off because certain individuals uh, just don't want to get it or eventually they, um, you know, they're waiting until more information is available or they're waiting to see how their colleagues or families do with it. So I think that we've started to really change um, interest from individuals in wanting to get the vaccine. And I think by doing it at the work site, it has only increased people's um, interest in wanting to get vaccinated uh, because they have, you know, um, their coworkers getting it. And now that they can bring their families and children um, to the sites as well, I think has been very uh, motivational for a lot of them. Um, so we're definitely has we've seen an increase, but you know, as you're alluding to, it will um, 
start to plateau. And so right now, what we've been talking about um, with the front office are incentives and how can we put together incentive programs. And so one of the things that um, Doc is going to be launching later this week is the QR code. Um, anyone who's gone through our vaccine clinics and anyone who's interested can use the QR code. And so we as uh, GHRA are going to be rolling this out. We want businesses to use the QR code to also show the date of your immunization. So that way, if you had to distinguish guests, um, let's say for an event or um, any kind of entry into an event convention or even hotel or restaurant, you actually have the information which stores not only their um, immunization record as an image, but it also has the data that's verified on WebIZ, mm -hmm. which is what um, public health uses. Okay, uh, anything in, in closing? Um, we're really trying to encourage more people to sign up for the WTTC. It's really important that we get more businesses um, in that program because it really does help reinforce the public health and safety protocols with public health, but also um, gives a, a nice baseline for GDB and GHRA to go out and promote these businesses as meeting the standards of health and safety protocols so we can um, use that in our promotions as we continue to promote Guam as a safe destination. And so G GHRA actually um, put in a grant to GITA um, in one of their uh, series four small business grants for nonprofits. And so we're hoping to be awarded that. We are looking forward to working also with UOG and GV to further promote WTTC and even do training. Um, but we did get a grant recently from GITA and it's worth $50,000. And um, so you can contact GHRA. I know that we've been promoting the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. Um, and there are a lot of businesses who did apply from Guam. Um, that window will be closing this week. But uh, if you haven't gotten it in, in already, but the funds have been exhausted pretty much if you, if you don't have your application in. But we did get a grant for $50,000 to mentor restaurants. So whether you're a food truck, um, catering business, a small business restaurant, um, standalone restaurant, we did get GITA money so that we can mentor you. And we have some experts that are willing to work with you and um, work with you on, on different kinds of things, whether it's inventory, menu, restaurant management, promotions, how to work with social media, the new delivery services, things like that. So um, we're gonna be announcing that soon, um, but we did uh, receive that funding. So those are the things we've been working on recently um, outside of vaccine clinics. And so we're excited to be launching the QR code soon um, with AMC. And we've asked uh, the Women's Chamber and the Guam Chamber of Commerce for their support. I'm gonna be reaching out with the Korean Association, the Chinese Merchants Association, as well as other um, other groups that, uh, trade groups, especially with our Asian community, I think it's really important that they use the QR code, but also get the training they need for health and safety protocols as we continue to move forward in uh, working together as a community to stay safe. Thank you, Mary, for your time this morning. Thank you. And thanks for allowing me to give an update on where we're at with our reopening. You got it. We want to All meet right, your dog thanks, next guys. time, okay? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. All right. Thank Bye. you, guys. Okay, That's the rule on the link. If your animal makes noise during the interview, then you got to bring him out and <laughs> introduce him. He's them. just louder than me, so yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you want that. <laughs> All right, Mary. Take it easy.